Welcome to part four of the uh, old padlock and key series. Now in this video, I'm gonna revisit the SVG. I feel like oh, in the previous video, I probably went through the process a little bit too quickly. So with that done, I'm just gonna go through the whole process of how I got to this final result. As you can see there, that's the one I used in my, in the final video. So let's start from the beginning and import the SVG link in the description. And let's just click import and there it is. Let's turn the wireframe off. And the first thing we want to do is set the origin to geometry. So right click to do that. And let's rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. You can see there, in fact, let's just change the location as well to zero. So there you go, there's the before and there's the after. Let's just hide the text for now. Right, if I turn the wireframe back on, you can see when we bring that in, <laughs> yeah, it's scary, right? Um, there's quite a lot of detail there and not easy to work with at all. Really bad topology. So we've got a lot of tidying up to do. Um, but do bear in mind, there's many ways to do this as a comparison of what we, so that's what we want to achieve. Just turn off the mirror modifier. That's what we want to do. And we've got to get to that from the original SVG. I was going to say that this is more than, there's more than one way to do this. And you could actually just start with a single vertex and just trace the outline and complete it that way and just create a, a fill, extrusions and a bevel. That would work as well. Um, but we'll come to that later on in the video. Look at some other possibilities. So just looking at the curve options there, if you switch it to 3D, you get this edge only. It's actually not a bad idea. You might want to just try taking the edge, convert it to a mesh and clean that up. But what I did initially was actually take this SVG as is in 2D mode. And I turned down the resolution there at the top down to three or something. And that reduces the, the vertex count quite a lot. So now we have something similar to what's over on the left side there. Just turn that off. So I'm looking at the gaps there. You can see they're kind of similar. So the resolution, turn the resolution down basically. Um, still very messy. Let's go back to our curve options. I'll leave it on 2D. You could leave it at 2 as well. That also works fine. Because you will, you will be adding a subdivision modifier to it, so two might be good enough actually. So what I want to do is I want to use that and convert that to a mesh. That was the next stage. Now tap into edit mode, you can see you've got all these vertices and edges. And we want to tidy all this up now. So you can see we've got clumps of these vertices here and there. So we want to tidy these up. So what I do is some vertex merging, either to last or center, depending on your selection. We've got a whole bunch down there. Right, so basically get stuck in now. So I'm going to go to edge mode and select all of the outer edges. It helps to have X-ray mode on. You can see the edges a bit clearer. So alt click and then shift alt click to select all of the outside edges for the whole mesh. And be careful with these areas, you want to zoom in and make sure you get the right, right part. Only the outside edges, remember. I'll speed through that because it's quite tedious. So once you've done that, and that's the last piece there, don't worry about the left side, we can use the mirror modifier. So with that's all done now, just make sure you've got everything selected and invert the selection. You just hit Control I there's the shortcut there, Control I. So with that done, we can press the X key for delete and you want to click limited dissolve. And that keeps the, um, the polygons inside, makes it nice and clean. Yep, the next stage. Now I want to switch to vertex mode and um, start merging vertices, reducing the vertex count basically. So this is again a slightly tedious process, but you don't have that many to work with. 
So in this case, I'm going to in this case I'm going to say pick one, then select the target, and do select merge at last or at center, depending on what kind of selection you have there. So I'm going to merge these two, for example, at center, and just move it, move it somewhere a bit nicer, maybe in the middle. Now you might have these edges here like this, which are quite straight. So you might want to subdivide that to create another vertex and give it a little bit more shape. Could probably do with one more vertex there actually, but uh doesn't matter. That seems fine. That seems okay. I do encourage you to zoom in sometimes at these um, junctions, because that's where a lot of the, the problems could occur, like overlapping vertices. So maybe try and merge vertices by distance as well, just to make sure you haven't got any overlapping here and there, because that would definitely cause problems later on. Now these two are a little bit superfluous, so just bring it down to one. We've got some clumping going on here, so let's maybe distribute these, distribute these a little bit nicer. Maybe that one there. Let's subdivide that part there and just bring that down a touch to keep that curve. Now we don't need that, so I'm going to merge that to last. Just press the M key, merge these at center, merge that at last, and so on. You get the idea. And this is pretty much why I didn't want to go through this in the first video when I tackled the SVG because it's just a tedious process. And uh, once you once you do this, it's the same process for all of these SVGs really. So yeah, as you can see, I'm just going through and tidying up distribution of the vertices and creating some subdivisions or subdivides, sorry, on some edges to add more vertices. Now with that done, I need to split it it's in the middle. So I'm going to just create these, select these two vertices and press the J key to join them. And that will create an edge. So do that for all of these circles. And by the way, you don't have to use the circles here. You can just delete them, actually. You could just add a cylinder or a flat, um, well, take the end of a cylinder and use that instead. But anyway, I'm going to select half of it now, these vertices on the left side, and delete those vertices. But you can see there, we're not, we're not quite in the center of the world, and our pivot point or origin point is also not aligned to the left side, so we need to move that. But first of all, I'm going to make sure these are all scaled on the X axis. So with those selected, press X and then X for the X axis, zero, enter. That'll make sure they're nice and flat. And in the top right there, we can actually change the origin point just by moving it. And I'm going to use um, vertex snapping for that. So make sure you have vertex snapping there. So I'm going to press and hold the control key as I do this. And if I move my mouse pointer over that point or vertex, it will snap. And make sure you turn that off once you've moved the origin point. And let's center that now at the world zero on the X axis. So now we can add the uh, mirror modifier. I won't use the add on. You see there, it's the same thing as the uh, modifiers there. Add a simple mirror. Make sure clipping is turned on. And that, for me, that's on the X axis. So, so far, so good. We've got a really clean poly mesh now that we can really work with quite easily. So the next stage gets a little bit messy again in that, well, first of all, once I apply the rotation, so let's do that there. If you don't have the add-on, just um, press Control A and select Apply Rotation. Anyway, with that done, I'm going to switch over to face mode. I was going to try and inset these here actually, but um, because we have that split in the middle, you can see there, this goes a little bit crazy. <laughs> we have all these um, extreme bends and stuff, and we've got these large end gons. So Blender doesn't really know what to do with some of these insets. So what I'm going to do is just go into these sharp points and just bring them in a little bit. So they're not as sharp and thin. And maybe that will help a little bit. Well, I found it helped a little bit anyway, so I'm going to move these in a touch here and there. You can always bring them out later on again if you need to. So yeah, just look out for these little sharp points and bring them in like that. Let's do the same for this one here. And that one's quite sharp, but... Uh, 
yeah, and we can always bring it back later on if you want to, or we'll leave it like that. Whatever you think, it looks good. Okay, so that's better. Let's try the inset again. So I switch to face mode now, select all the faces, and press I. Maybe hold down shift as you do this to get finer control. You can still see we're getting some really weird results depending on the, the amount of inset. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to help Blender a little bit here by selecting um, these vertices and just pressing J to join them. It is that way Blender's got an idea of the boundaries of the polygons at least. And as always, I can never see the live knife tool icon there. Press the, I'm going to use the knife tool basically instead of selecting vertices and J. So with the knife tool, if you make cuts from one to the other, you want to continue cutting, just press right click and then make more cuts like that. So continue doing that as many cuts as you like. Right click and keep doing that. And once you're happy with that, you can then press enter. But first of all, make sure you press right click and then enter. And that will confirm or commit the cuts you've made to that point. Now, don't be afraid of making triangles at this point. Don't worry about that. Just make sure you cut everything nicely and introduce new cuts as well, like I'm doing here. If you feel you need to make a cut somewhere else, let's just quickly do that. Yeah, you can see there, I made another cut there. And let's just finish off by doing this part here. So as I said, right mouse button to exit the cutting and then enter to commit the cuts you've made. So now with that done, let's switch back to face mode. And I'm gonna select the L key, just these ones here actually, for now, or just that one. And I'm gonna inset that. You can see it behaves a lot better now with those cuts that we've made. <laughs> so there's our inset. You can see there compared to the, the final one. So the next stage is we've got overlapping occurring from the inset. So this is quite confusing when you look at it, it's just a bit of a mess. So you just click on these vertices and move them and figure out where they should go. If not, just select them all and merge them all together. So something like that seems to be what works, but I decided to select these two and then that one last and merge at last. Just to tidy that up there. Let's have a look at the next one now. This one's a bit easier to figure out. That one obviously from the point and these two are from the sides. So I'm gonna do the same again, select that and that one, that one last and M for merge and then merge at last. So that's fine. You've got some very close vertices there. Let's just move them out a little bit. We might as well keep those as is. And that's fine at the top part there. And you can see that's what I did in the original. Just went and tidied those in. Tidied those up, I should say. Right, so we've got a bit more work to do. So I'll speed this up, same thing. Just make sure these are nicely uh, tidied up. Make some cuts if you need to. And let's concentrate on this bit here. It's a bit more messy this part. So spread these out, we need those, and merge these together. There you go. There's a few more down there. You might have to line these up, it does help. And finally merge them as well, and spread those out, just a touch. Maybe make some cuts where you need, you feel, or you feel they're needed. And don't worry about that end on there. It's on a, it sits on a flat plane, so it, it works fine. Okay, one more cut there maybe. So now with that done, we can do the other part. So switch to face mode, hover over that, press the L key to select all of the linked objects and give it a slight inset again. And at the top there, you can see that's okay, actually the bottom part. And that's okay as well. Result. 
We just want to tidy up the top part, I think. There you go. What a mess that is. Whoa. Okay. Get them somewhere like that, and then you can merge them together again. Spread these out. We need those. This is too many, so I'm going to merge them together into one and bring that there just like that. Cool. And with that done, just double check we haven't missed anything. Maybe we don't need that as well. Let's just merge these. Yeah, that would do. And let's maybe bring that down a little bit. <laughs> so just check over you haven't missed anything. And again, switch over to face select, select these faces, create an inset. That one's really easy, it just works straight out of the gate. Now the circles, again, you can just make one of these, copy them and, and duplicate them. But I, w I went through and just did them manually. So I selected all of the circles and press the I key. There's nothing at the bottom there. Press the I key and give it a slight inset again. And that will do. So let's apply the mirror modifier. Do that in object mode, of course. And let's delete these um, edges we have running down the middle. Again, use limited dissolve for that. So it keeps the, uh, the shape that we have there. Back to face mode, select those finally and press the I key and create a bit of an inset. And the reason why we're creating the insets, by the way, is because these are going to be support loops um, or support edges for when we add a subdivision modifier. Without that, it would just make everything very rounded and just look quite bad. So always create these kind of islands, as I like to call them. And then that works every single time. But anyway, what I'm doing now is just splitting these um, flat planes there, these engons, into four quads. So again, I'm using the knife tool. So K for the knife tool, click one, click twice. Right mouse click to continue the cuts. And when you're happy, right click and then enter to commit the cuts. I'll just quit, quickly do these as well. So click one, two, right click, one, two, right click. There's some more over there. Now we have all of those to do as well. Hey, I told you this was tedious, but hey, don't shoot the messenger. Sometimes you've got to get your hands dirty with these things. You can see why you might want to just copy one of these and just scale it up and move it around. <laughs> Much easier than doing this multiple times but this is what i did and i'm going to show you that what i did is not always the best way to do it but the result is the same i kind of just got my head down and just went through this really so there you go there's a few more down there that we missed but uh no worries And one more. So anyway, I hope you all have a lovely Christmas wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever you celebrate. I know, uh, in fact, I just learned the other day that somebody has a Christmas coming up today, in fact, or tomorrow um, in Serbia, I believe, something like that. So have fun, you guys, over in Serbia. So anyway, I, I could have mirrored the, um, the object again, but I chose to just go through and just cut these. Uh, manually with the knife tool again it doesn't really doesn't take long just a couple of minutes whoops if you, if you make a mistake just press ctrl z and can continue where you left off and you might think there's no need to do this and they're probably to some degree there isn't, these are flat planes, so the engons don't really matter. But I like to know that these are quads, 
are, are being cut the right way. And Blender's not creating any weird strips or anything like that. Triangles that may interfere with our subdiv modifier. Yep, so let's again looking at the original side by side to the one I've just made again. You can see they're very similar. I mean, not perfect, but close enough. Maybe add some more detail where you feel you need to. So you can use the knife tool or control R actually. That would be, that would create a loop cut um, with control R there. We've got a nasty end on there. I just noticed, but uh, again, that shouldn't make a difference because Blender is triangulating that internally anyway. Cool. Right, so let's turn X-Ray off and let's add a solid define modifier now. Give it some uh, thickness. That's under generate solid define if you don't have the add-on. And that's what we get with that. So let's, let's click on even thickness. That was always a good idea to do that. And I always click high quality normals just in case that does anything really amazing. I don't know if it does, but here you go. Anyway, I applied the um, Solidify modifier. Now we want to add one more cut just on the, the sides of everything. Again, that will be a support loop. So that when we add the subdivision modifier, it doesn't make it all completely smooth. So we need a support loop on that side. The easiest way to do that is to switch to perhaps a side or top view with one or seven on the keypad. One, three or seven, I should say whatever works best for your viewport really. Um, and then use the knife tool, which I will do shortly. However, I did notice something actually while I was doing this. Yeah, you can see there we've got some, not everything is perfectly lined up. You can see there we've got a little bit of a uh, geometry sticking out at the back and at the front. So before we continue, let's make sure we flatten those on the Y axis which is the green line you can see going up and down there on the screen. I'm trying to figure out where that actually is. I can't really tell because it's so th it's so flat. It's hard to pinpoint exactly where that is. But anyway, I'm going to select those. Just push these back to get a lot more depth to this. That makes it a little bit easier to work with the front polygons or the front section, I should say. So I'm going to select all of the front ones and then S, Y, zero enter do the same for the back as well so that's s for scale y for the y-axis zero to make them flat and then enter now we have all of these nicely flattened cool switch back to y for uh solid mode let's add that cut now that i was talking about let's do it from this side now now they've got it thicker in fact the top view is probably better so x-ray mode or y-frame mode is critical for this otherwise you won't be cutting through so just make sure you turn that on. There's the knife mode. I found it after all. Press the K key. Now, two things you must press. A for angle. Angle snap. So that happens. This is what happens when you press the A key. You get angle snaps. And then C. I know we've got X-ray on. C. And then right click, enter. C for cut through. A for angles. So K for the knife tool. Press A for angles. C for cut through. And there's our cut, which went right through the model. You can see there, I'm just checking that is the case, which it seems to be. Now we want to select all of these, these edges there. So it's easier to do it in um, X-ray mode on the side and just select all of these vertices or edges, depending on what you want to select. And then press G twice. And that will slide them along the shape and bring that right up to the edge. So because it becomes a support loop which is what we wanted in the first place. And you don't want to make it too too thick, just, just bring it in. It got a little bit fiddly that part there, I don't know why it kind of weird, felt weird. So I'm holding down the shift key as I do that. I think that's probably good enough. And with that done, we can now select the back part. Switch to X-ray mode again. Let's select all of these back vertices and just bring them forward, something like that. Awesome. If we bring back the original, we now have the same thing, the same result. 
Yes, I added a few more circles at the base there. If you compare the left to right, I added three more circles that I didn't have in my SVG. But like I say, you can just copy one of the existing ones. Right, at this point, I'm going to add a subdiv modifier. And I'm going to increase the levels to, uh, oops, let's right click and shade smooth as well. Let's have uh, viewport levels to set to two as well. Isn't that looking great? Look at that. Yeah, as I mentioned, I already added three more cylinders or circular bits, circle bits at the bottom there. Yeah, you can make your own shapes. It doesn't have to be an SVG file. Um, you can just create your own um, with, with simple geometry. At this point, at the end, I, I don't need the back faces, so I switched to face mode, selected those, and just delete them. I don't need them because you won't see them up against the, the padlock. So there it is. That's the process I went through. So um, if you didn't get part three with the uh, my seven minute video, sorry if I, if I didn't get that across. This is effectively what I did. I've done that, what, three times now, I think. Um, check your face orientation, very important. And there you go. That's looking pretty good. Yay. That's the jiggle of success, by the way. And closing thoughts. Uh, you can use curves straight off the bat and then later on convert those to meshes. You could just start with a mesh and just trace the pattern that you want to create. You could convert an SVG to mesh and then try a remesh. That's another option. Um, but overall, whatever method you use, keep it simple, use basic geometry. And finally, use modifiers to add more geometry and smoothness. Thanks for watching everybody and I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was useful to learn something. Like and subscribe if you like my content. Thank you very much and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.